Hey everyone, U.S. Immigration Lawyer Michael Ashuri here. And in today's video, I want to update you on some important updates to the E-2 visa. Back in May, the Department of State made certain tweaks to the E-2 visa. And for purposes of this video, I want to focus on one of those tweaks. And it has to do with derivative beneficiaries of the principal E-2 applicant. So when somebody applies for an E-2 visa, they're considered the principal applicant and they can also join their spouse and their unmarried children that are under 21 years old to their application and their spouse and children could get their own E-2 visas. Again, the spouse and the children are referred to as the derivative beneficiaries and the principal applicant is referred to as the principal applicant. So the changes that have been announced specifically have to do with circumstances where the principal applicant has different citizenship than the derivative beneficiaries. Now, I'm going to have to give some background information, so bear with me. First thing I want you to know is that not all E-2 visas are the same. The E-2 visa is a special visa that allows somebody to invest in a U.S. business, and based on investing in that U.S. business, they can get the E-2 visa to direct and develop their business in the United States. Now, the E-2 visa is only available to citizens of certain countries that have an E-2 treaty with the United States. Now, there are many different countries that have E-2 treaties with the United States. Here's where it gets interesting. Different countries have different visa terms. And what I mean by that is, for example, Canada and the United States. With citizens of Canada, they typically get a five-year visa that allows for multiple entries. The visa can be used typically to enter and exit the United States for a period of five years. And because it's multiple entry, that means that the holder of that E-2 visa that is a citizen of Canada can enter and exit multiple times using that visa. Now let's contrast that with a country like Jordan. Jordan also has an E-2 treaty with the United States, but a citizen of Jordan gets an E-2 visa that's typically only valid for three months and can only be used for one single entry. So as you can see, a Canadian that's applying for an E-2 visa and a Jordanian that's applying for an E-2 visa, they get two totally different benefits. One person has the ability in theory, to enter and exit for five years. And another person can only enter one time within that initial three-month validity period of the visa. I know that's a lot of background information, but it's important to address these changes that have to do with principal investors and derivative beneficiaries. So in the past, the way that it would work if a principal investor had different citizenship than the derivative beneficiaries, the way it would work in the past is that assuming the visa was approved, everyone would get a visa with the same duration as the principal applicant. So let's go through an example where there is a Canadian principal investor and the derivative beneficiaries are Israeli. So Canada has a E-2 visa that typically permits a five-year validity period. Israel has an E-2 visa that has a 24-month validity period. Historically, in the past, in this example, the principal applicant and the derivative beneficiaries would all get an E-2 visa, assuming the E-2 visa was approved, that was valid for five years. Even though Israeli citizens typically get an E-2 visa that's valid for 24 months, because the principal applicant was a Canadian citizen that typically gets a five-year visa, then the principal applicant and all their derivative beneficiaries would get a five-year visa as well. That was how it worked in the past. Now it's different. According to these updates to the E-2 program, now, if there is a situation where the principal investor holds different citizenship than the derivative beneficiaries and the derivative beneficiaries' citizenship is also to an E-2 treaty country, then each of the parties would get a visa with a validity period that applies to their country. So under these new rules, in the example that I just mentioned, the principal investor that is a Canadian citizen would get the five-year visa and the derivative beneficiaries that are citizens of Israel would get the 24-month, essentially two-year visas. Now, this is a major difference than how it was done in the past, as you can see. A couple of more important things that I want to mention about these changes in policy. As I mentioned earlier, the E-2 visa is only available to citizens of certain countries. What happens if there's a principal applicant that is a citizen of an E-2 country, but the derivative beneficiaries do not hold citizenship to an E-2 treaty country. Let's give an example, again, where the principal applicant is a citizen of Canada and the derivative beneficiaries are citizens of India. Well, India is not an E-2 treaty country, so how would that work? Well, the derivative beneficiaries are still eligible to get their E-2 visa based on the citizenship of the principal applicant, 
Again, the principal applicant in this example is a citizen of Canada. So the derivative beneficiaries can still be eligible for their E2 visa based on the citizenship of the principal applicant. And the validity period of the derivative beneficiaries would be based on the Canadian citizenship. So in this example, where the derivative beneficiaries do not have citizenship to an E2 treaty country, they would get E2 visas, assuming the principal applicant's E2 visa was approved and assuming everybody's E2 visas were approved, they would be approved based on the validity period of the principal applicant. So in the example of a Canadian principal applicant, it would be a five-year visa, most likely. So just one more update that I wanted to mention. What happens if the derivative beneficiaries have citizenship to a country that has a greater validity period than the principal applicant. So let's do the example that we did earlier where the principal applicant was a citizen of Canada and the derivative beneficiaries were citizens of Israel. Let's flip that. Let's say that the derivative beneficiaries are citizens of Canada and the principal applicant is a citizen of Israel. So again, to remind everyone, Israel has a 24 month validity period typically for E2 visas and Canada has a five year validity period. So in that case, if the principal investor, the principal applicant gets approved through their Israeli citizenship, they would get a 24 month visa, presumably. And assuming the de derivative beneficiaries were also approved, even though their Canadian citizenship would typically entitle an E2 applicant for five years because of the situation where the principal applicant is capped at 24 months then the derivative beneficiaries are also capped at 24 months they're not eligible for the full five-year visa because the principal applicant was capped at 24 months so basically for derivatives right now under these new rules the derivative beneficiary if they have different citizenship than the principal applicant will get no more than the principal applicant's visa validity period and if their country of citizenship has a lower validity period then they will get the lower validity period and again if the derivative beneficiary has citizenship that is not to an e2 treaty country then they would get the E2 visa validity period, similar to what the principal applicant would get. Now, I know this is a ton of information. I hope you found this information helpful. I hope I explained it clearly enough. Thank you so much for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. If you know anybody that can benefit from this information, please feel free to share this information with them. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.